All right, hi everybody. Um, sorry I'm not here, but I'll get you through what you need to know or what we didn't finish um, on Friday. So we have a little bit left, mostly talking about absolute value. Uh, so I'm going to start with the definition. There's two of them. There's a geometric definition. which you're probably used to, and it's probably how you figure out absolute value of certain numbers fairly quickly. It's just the distance to zero on a number line, which means that absolute value then will always be positive since distance is not a negative value. I think you guys know this. Okay, and now Keeping in mind that we want absolute value to always be positive, there's this fancy algebraic definition which if you came from 9091, you probably had it all over your tests uh, throughout the year, and if you did not, I mean you saw it, you just probably didn't have it as much. So here it is. The absolute value of x is either x or negative x. Okay, and the, the quickest way to explain why we have these scenarios is because we don't know what x is unless we're told what it is, but we can classify it as two cases. Either x is greater or equal to zero, meaning it's positive or zero. The second case would be the exact opposite of that. That would be if x is less than zero, when x is negative. Okay? So the way you would interpret this definition is basically, for instance, if we took the absolute value of negative 12, okay? <clears throat> I think we all know that this is 12, okay? Because the distance from 0 to negative 12 is 12 units. Now, if we're interpreting this using the algebraic definition, Okay, here's how you would kind of make sense out of this and how it works. First, is this number on the inside, the inside expression, we'll say, because it could just be a number or it could be a, a, a few different things with variables. Is the inside expression positive or negative? Okay. Since we know that this is a negative value, we're going to stick with the second case here. Okay? Since negative 12 is definitely a value that's smaller than 0, this tells me that in order to figure out negative 12, or the absolute value of negative 12, that you'd actually do the opposite. You do the opposite of what is in the per, uh, absolute value here. And of course we get 12. Okay? Uh, if we had a positive value, something like, let's say, 5, we know that the answer for that should be 5, obviously. But now the way you would interpret this with the algebraic definition, <clears throat> first of all, 5 is a number greater than 0. So then according to the definition, since 5 is bigger than 0, my answer is just whatever is in the absolute value, just x. So in this case, since 5 is in there, 5 comes out. Okay, So that's kind of how you would work with that. Now, this definition allows you to do a few different things, okay? Uh, you can certainly rewrite expressions without absolute value. So, if you have an absolute value uh, expression such as, let's say, pi minus 7 plus 7, to rewrite this without any absolute value at all, you'd have to rely on the definition. Okay, so it's the same thing we did before. First, is this number on the inside, is it positive or negative? And if you know that pi is 
3.14. When you subtract 7, that's definitely going to be a negative value. Okay? So now, according to the definition, which is right up here, if the number inside the absolute value is negative, then I must do the opposite of whatever is in there. Okay? So then to simplify this, you do the opposite of pi minus 7. This just comes down, plus 7. Now you simplify as much as possible. Distribute the negative. So in this case, my answer would be negative pi plus 14. Okay? And any problem that works, uh, any problem where the directions say rewrite without absolute value works exactly the same. Um, as long as you know, as long as you have some information about what's on the inside of the absolute value here, if you can determine if this is positive or negative, then you can get rid of the absolute value entirely and then simplify. If you don't have enough information, then you would probably just leave it in that uh, absolute value. Okay, so here's another scenario. Let's say we have the absolute value of x squared plus seven. Okay, again, is this positive or negative in here? That's the question. Well, x squared, we know, no matter what, if I square it, it's going to be a positive value. Uh, since a positive times a positive is positive, a negative times a negative is positive, the only exception is if I have zero. When I square zero, I get zero. But regardless, this is always positive. And since it's always positive, Again, referring back to the definition, since what's inside of the absolute value is greater or equal to zero, that's this case, we do nothing. We just get rid of the absolute value. Whoops, wrong problem. We get rid of the absolute value, and we're done. Okay? And we can't really simplify or do anything there. So that would be it. Okay? Here's another uh, quick example. Let's say we have the absolute value of x plus 70 and we're told that x is less than negative 70. Okay, so we'll proceed exactly the same way. x plus 70. Is it positive or is it negative? That's the question. Since we know x is smaller than negative 70, we're talking about numbers like negative 71, negative 72, anything smaller than that. So regardless of which number you pick, let's say negative 71, if I add 70 to it, the result is always negative. Okay, so no matter what, this is always negative, and definition says if it's negative, we do the opposite of what is inside the absolute value. So here we can distribute the negative, and here's our answer. Okay, so that's how you work with the definition as far as just kind of cleaning expressions up or simplifying them. Okay, the last piece I want to review with you guys is now solving absolute value equations and inequalities. <coughs> okay, so we have... Start with absolute value equations. <coughs> I think we can start with an example we can all think about uh, intuitively. Let's say I have something like this. If I have the absolute value of x equals 3, I think you can all figure out that there are two values for x that could give you 3, mainly 3 or negative 3. Because 3 is 3 units away from 0, and so is negative 3. I mean, if you plug them in, negative 3 has an absolute value of 3, and so does 3. Okay, so that several different ways to explain why that needs to be the case. Okay, now, knowing that, then we can apply this to a harder example. Let's say something like the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to 4. OK, 
Okay, now, according to the definition, which again is right here, there are two scenarios that would work here. I can either take the exact thing that's in the absolute value or take the opposite of what's in the absolute value and those two would have to give me four. Okay, So first you just do x minus 5 equals 4. You solve you get 9. Okay, the second case would be taking the opposite of x minus 5. That would have to be 4. Okay. So first, since I'm multiplying a negative here, I could divide by negative 1. Now I get x minus 5 equals negative 4. If I add 5 to both sides, you get x equals negative 1. Okay, so here we have two answers again. Negative 1. Oh, that should be positive. I was just about to check these answers, and I checked it, and it didn't work. When you add 5, you get a positive 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, so when you take the absolute value, that works. Uh, if you plug in 9, certainly 9 minus 5 is 4, and that also has an absolute value of 4. Okay. Now, the one thing I did want to mention is that a lot of you from Algebra 1 or Honors Algebra, maybe this is where you start. Like if you remember, oh, you just do whatever's in the parentheses or the absolute value, sorry. Whatever's in the absolute value, set it equal to 4, and you set it equal to negative 4. Because those are the two values that have an absolute value of 4. And that's totally fine. Okay, so I don't really, I don't really have a preference to whether you use the definition exactly the way it's intended, or if you kind of skip this first step and just know that either 4 or negative 4 are the two values that we can have in here, and that's how we get our answers. Okay, and now if we just go one more example here, let's make it more complicated, something like 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3, let's say that equals 9. Okay, before you do two cases. The absolute value must be isolated, must be alone. Okay, so you can't start with this and say, oh, I'll just do 9, negative 9, and solve. Okay, you actually have to isolate the absolute value first. So first we would subtract 3, divide by 2, and now we've gotten to a point, like in the previous example, where we have the absolute value equal to 3. So again, first case, you do x minus 1 equals 3, solve. Second case, you do the opposite of x minus 1 equals 3, you solve that one. Here you get 4. Here if you divide by negative 1, you get negative 3. And again, some of you might have just started with that, and that's totally fine. When you add negative, or when you add 1, you get negative 2. Okay, so these are the two answers for this one. Plug in 4, you can quickly verify that it works. If you plug in negative 2, that will also work. Okay, so always get in the habit of taking these answers, plugging it in, and making sure that it works. Because sometimes, um, for instance, here's a special case. Anytime you have the absolute value of anything equal to a negative number, like let's say negative 5, okay, you can go through the whole process setting up your cases and you will get two answers, but no matter what, when you take the absolute value of anything, this is always positive. So there's no way that this is ever going to equal negative 5. Okay, so this is a special case where we actually have no solution. Okay, so it's good to kind of know that headed uh, going into the problem. In fact, I would expect you to recognize absolute value never equal to a negative. I'm not even going to waste time. The answer is no solution. Okay. All right, the last piece I want to quickly review is absolute value inequalities. Okay. Now 
All right, so we, ha we basically have two scenarios, and we'll start with the first one. Let's say I have absolute value of x greater than 3. Okay, and I think some of you might already have an idea, but let's just kind of use the definition and see where this takes us, all right? We have case 1. Take what's in the absolute value, set it greater than 3, or case 2, take the absolute, uh, take what's in the absolute value, but do the opposite, and set that greater than 3. Okay? Here's the key, so that you guys know which case it's going to be. There's two different words that are very important to use here, and here's how I remember which one to use. This symbol here is read as great, I'm going to spell it wrong on purpose, but this is a great or symbol. I know that's pretty cheesy, sorry. But it helps me remember, okay? A greater inequality symbol, so if the absolute value is greater, or great or, rather, you're going to separate your two cases with the word or, okay? The other case, let's say we have absolute value less than, uh, less than 3, okay? This is read as absolute value is less than 3. Well, this isn't as clever, but it still works. Than sounds very similar to the word and, okay? So think great or, or, than and and are connected. Okay, so this will translate to two cases connected with the word and. Okay, so that's how we're going to set them up. When we solve each of these, this is already solved for, x is greater than 3, 4. Here we have divide by negative, so we get x is less than negative 3. Don't forget when you divide by a negative, you switch the sign. And here's your algebraic inequality uh, notation. Two cases, x is greater than 3 or x is less than negative 3. If you graph on a number line, we have open circles on both, and we shade on the outsides, since that's what these symbols tell us to do. Okay, now if we solve the second case, absolute value of x is less than 3. Okay, again, we'll do two cases. Take what's in the absolute value, set it less than 3. Take what's in the absolute value, but do the opposite of that, set it less than 3. And remember that this is connected now with the word and. Okay? So let's solve. x is less than 3, and divide by a negative, x is greater than negative 3. These two can be written as one statement since x has to be less than 3, but at the same time, that's what and means, greater than negative 3, this is how you'd write your solution. Okay? And when you shade, open circles, the only difference now is because we're less than 3, but at the same time also greater than negative 3, so we're going to shade in between here. And you probably remember from algebra that, you know, a greater symbol, you're going to end up, I'm sorry, uh, when absolute value is greater, you're going to shade on the outsides, typically. And when it's less than, you're going to end up shading on the inside, assuming that both cases work. Okay? Um, the symbols, whether it's greater and then equal to, or less than or equal to, it, the equal to doesn't make a difference. All you really want to pay attention to is whether it's greater or less than, and you set them up exactly the same. Okay? So, let's just do an example here. Same rules as before. Isolate absolute value first. And then solve. Okay, so let's make this a greater than or equal to. First step is to add 5. So now I get uh, 2 times the absolute value of x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 9.
divide by 2. So now I got absolute value of x plus 9 is greater than or equal to, neg uh, to 9 halves. And now we do our two cases. Whenever you want to get rid of absolute value, you always do two cases. So case 1, take what's inside and just copy it down. Greater than or equal to 9 over 2. Since this is great or, right here, absolute value is great or, we're going to use or to separate our two cases. And now we do the opposite of what's on the inside and set that greater or equal to 9 halves. Okay, here when you subtract 9, uh, if you get a common denominator, 9 over 2 would be minus 18 over 2. So this becomes negative 9 over 2. Or, here we divide by a negative 1 first, so reversing the symbol. Okay, now we're going to subtract 9 here. Negative 9 halves minus 18 halves, if you get a common denominator, that's going to be negative 27 halves. So here are the algebraic solutions. Number line, negative 9 over 2. Oh, sorry, negative 27 over 2 is smaller, so that goes on the left. Negative 9 over 2, both closed circles. It's an OR statement, so I just shade wherever it tells me. Uh, smaller than that and greater than negative 9 halves. So we shade again on the outsides. And certainly you should be able to do not only algebraic notation, but for any one of these you should be able to do interval notation. So that should be negative infinity to negative 27 over 2 with a bracket, union, another bracket, negative 9 over 2 to infinity. Okay. So there's an OR example. Again, AND would be exactly the same. Just follow this argument up here, or this method. Okay? If it's a less than, make it an AND statement. Do two cases. Take whatever's on the inside, less than whatever we got, whatever's on the inside, but do the opposite. So that's why that negative is here. And again, set it less than 3, or whatever the number is, and then you just solve each one just like we did here, okay? All right, so that was a quick review of absolute value, uh, something that you'd probably spend several days on in Algebra 1 and 2. We're spending about 20 minutes here, uh, and now it's time for you guys to practice. So have a good day. Sorry I can't be here, uh, and stop texting. You know who I'm talking about. All right, see you guys later.